How to conduct a systematic review of patient reported outcome measures. Suppose you're designing a trial and you want to measure the severity of pain, depression, or physical functioning from the patient's perspective. Then you need to decide which outcome measurement instrument is most suitable. A patient reported outcome measure, or PROM, is often a questionnaire filled out by the patient. Selecting a high quality PROM is a crucial part in the study design phase of your trial. If the PROM you choose is of poor quality, the conclusions from your research might not be valid. They can lead to wrong interpretations or even harmful medical decisions. This is a waste of resources and unethical. So how do you select the most suitable PROM for your construct and population? A systematic review of PROMs is a great way to find the right instrument. This review helps you to find all available PROMs, evaluate their quality, and decide which is the most reliable and valid PROM for your research. If a high quality review is not available, you can conduct a systematic review yourself. Do you think this is complex? Don't worry, we're here to guide you. We are COSME, a multidisciplinary group of researchers in the field of medicine. We have developed a methodology to improve the selection of outcome measurement instruments. As a part of this, we evaluate the quality aspects, the measurement properties of the instrument. With our course and manual, we help researchers through the process of conducting a systematic review. We do this in eight steps. First, you need to know what you want to review. Every systematic review starts by defining four key elements. What is your construct of interest? For example, depression or physical functioning. What is your target population? Healthy children or adults with diabetes? What measurement properties do you want to evaluate? All nine of them or only content validity? What type of PROM do you want to include? All disease-specific or generic PROMs? In step one, you use these four key elements to formulate your research question. In the manual, we give the following example. What are the measurement properties of diabetes-specific PROMs for measuring physical functioning in adults with type 2 diabetes? In step two, you formulate the eligibility criteria using the same four key elements. In step three, you develop the literature search. You can use the Cosmin search filter for measurement properties. Ideally, you do this together with a clinical librarian. We advise you to register your review in the PROSPRO database. This reduces the potential for reporting bias and helps to avoid duplication. Then we want to know which studies have been done. In step four, you conduct a literature search. You screen the abstracts and full text papers to find the studies you are looking for. By the end of this step, you'll have gathered all the available articles on the measurement properties of the PROMs of interest. After you run the search, you can count how many articles you found and decide whether the review is feasible. If you find too many articles, you can narrow down your research aim or expand your review team. In step five, you organize the studies from your articles by PROM and measurement property in our filing cabinet. You read the articles for the first time. From the articles, you identify the PROMs. For each PROM, you want to evaluate all nine measurement properties, starting with content validity, structural validity, internal consistency, and so on. Then you find all the studies in your article and organize them by PROM and measurement property. You will often find multiple studies on different measurement properties in a single article. For example, a study on structural validity and a study on internal consistency. You can use our Cosmin review management file to extract all your data during step five and six. In step six, 
you look at each measurement property to evaluate the quality of the prom. Within step six, we have six stations that we repeat for each measurement property per prom. For this example, we look at the three studies we found for reliability of prom A. You drop one study from your drawer into the first station. Here, you extract the study details. We fill in the sample size and result of the study in a review management file. At the second station, you evaluate the methodological quality of each study. There are four ratings, very good, adequate, doubtful, and inadequate. You use the standards of the Cosmin Risk of Bias checklist to rate the study. When the study enters the station, you check the study for each of the quality standards for reliability. The time interval was appropriate. We assumed the patients were stable on the constructs, but no evidence was provided. The test conditions were similar. The appropriate ICC formula was calculated. At the end, you give it a final rating based on the worst score of each standard. At the third station, you rate the study results as sufficient, a plus, or insufficient, a minus. You base this on the Cosmin criteria for good measurement properties. If not enough information is available, you give it a question mark. Our study is larger than the reliability criterion of 0.7 and gets a plus. You will repeat these three stations for the other studies for reliability of PROM A. Then, you will document your findings in the review management file. In the first three stations, we looked at the individual studies. In stations four to six, we will use this information to make a conclusion on the reliability of PROM A. In the fourth station, we therefore combine all study results into a summarized result. In the fifth station, you rate the summarized result with the same criteria for good measurement properties. Our summarized result for reliability of PROM A is sufficient and gets a plus. If you have inconsistent results, see the manual. In the sixth station, we decide how confident we are about that conclusion. In this last step of the marble run, you grade the quality of the evidence as high, moderate, low or very low. You do this by first considering the risk of bias. If you find a risk of bias, you downgrade. If there is inconsistency, imprecision, or indirectness, you can downgrade by another level. In our case, we find no reason to downgrade and conclude that we have high quality evidence for sufficient reliability of PROM A. Once you have reached a final conclusion, you continue with the reliability of PROM B. You can find detailed instructions in the manual for each measurement property. To help you document the process, you add your extracted data, ratings and gradings in our Cosmin review management file. By the end, you will have a comprehensive overview of the evidence for each measurement property per PROM summarized in your table. Now it's time to select the best PROM. In step seven, you will make an evidence-based and fully transparent recommendation on the quality of each PROM. Let's have a look at our filing cabinet. We see that we have the most information for PROM A and B. PROM A has the most pluses and is often graded as high quality. PROM E is a newly developed PROM. It has great content validity with high quality evidence, but not enough studies were conducted to recommend this instrument just yet. Our final conclusion would be to recommend PROM A and to do more research into PROM E. In step eight, the final step, you write your paper and submit your review to a scientific journal. We developed the Prisma Cosmin reporting guidelines to help you write a good report. Congrats, you finished your review. You have made an informed recommendation of a PROM for the construct and population of your interest. With this recommendation, you help the entire field to standardize instrument selection and do better research. Use our manual when you start your systematic review. You can find the manual and all Cosmin tools on our website, cosmin.nl. For personal guidance on how to conduct a systematic review of PROMS, take our online course at academy.cosmin.nl.